14 months ago, I published a video on geomagnetic activity in human health, the Planetary K Index Explained, because many people were asking me questions, and today, many more are asking the same questions. What are the effects of geomagnetic activity on human health? What is the KP index? What does it mean? Why should I care? Well, the reason I published the video was because we came off of our first KP zero day in the solar cycle minimum of cycle 24. Indicative of grand solar minimas and our wane, waning magnetosphere, these KP zero days are to be expected. And I even suggest there may be a KP zero week or month. Links to this video will be below. But it, it's imperative that every year we update the activity because there are new subscribers, new information, and we have a certain uh, developing repertoire with our subscribers that we need to update this information in a clearer and concise way. Now, for those of you listening, the KP index is simply the Global Geomagnetic Activity Index. That's it. And it helps us determine the level of geomagnetic activity on Earth. It's specifically determined by perturbations to the ionosphere in our planet, which is why we look at the Discover Solar Wind chart here. We look for phi angle shifts and the shifts in the BZ, the density, the speed, and the temperature. They all tell us what the KP index is going to do. Now, the planetary KP index is a composite of the K index and the A index. What are all these indexes? And why are they important? They're important because we now know that the KP index can tell us many things. It can warn us about human health problems associated with geomagnetic activity. It can warn us of potential telluric current fluctuations, which uh, are associated with earthquakes, volcanoes. It can tell us about cosmic ray flux. When we're down at zero, we know that muons in the subsurface are heating that magma. So we could potentially predict earthquakes that could be triggered, like the one here at White's Island, triggered by a shift in the phi angle, shown here on the spike in the KP. This spike is when White's Island volcano went off yesterday. It's when we can determine that the phi angle was exactly at 180, right here, during this shift. It's minor, but we can determine it. The White Island volcano was kicked off by perturbations to the magnetosphere, which show up in the K and A indices, which you can find over at Space Weather Prediction Center at NOAA, and the links will be below. Now, let's delve a little deeper into it. There are two indices that are used to determine the level of geomagnetic activity on Earth. The A index, down here, and the K index, up here. Many of you know the KP index, but we'll get to that last. Now, the A and the K index give indications of the severity of the magnetic fluctuations on Earth, and hence the disturbance to the ionosphere, because this is what picks it up, the ionosphere. It's the outer protective shell of our um, biosphere. It protects us from space. And here you can see an M2 flare showing up quite nicely in the magnetic perturbations, where blue shifts here above red. When blue was above red, now blue shifts above red. We can see a magnetic perturbation, a sudden ionospheric disturbance, so to speak. The first of the two indices to measure geomagnetic activity is the K-index. 
Each magnetic observatory calibrates its magnetometer so that its K index describes the same level of magnetic disturbance. No matter whether the observatory is located in the auroral region or at the Earth's equator. And you can see here Boulder, Fredericksburg, and College Station, <laughs> or wherever the hell that is. And I skipped over the estimated planetary because that's your KP index. It's a composite, but we'll get to that. So no matter where the observatory is located, at three hourly intervals starting at zero UTC each day, the maximum deviation from the quiet day curve at a particular observatory is determined and the largest value is selected. This value is then manipulated mathematically and the K index is calculated for that location. The K index is a quasi-logarithmic number and as such cannot be averaged to give a longer term view of the state of the Earth's magnetic field. Thus was born the A index and so on and so forth. <laughs> now, at each three hour increments, the K index at an observatory is converted to an equivalent, A index, to produce an A index for that day. It can vary up to around 100 during severe geomagnetic storms and can reach values up to 200 and very occasionally more. The A index reading varies from one observatory to the next since magnetic disturbances are localized globally. To overcome this, the indices are averaged over the globe to produce the AP index, the planetary value. Similarly, the KP index, which many of you know about, is the planetary average of all the K indices at observatories around the globe, which is why we use it on the show. It's an average of what's happening globally. Values between 0 and 1 represent quiet magnetic conditions. That doesn't mean that they are safe conditions because KP0 represents the lowest magnetic protection of our planet, which allows cosmic rays to rain down in, heat volcanoes, and affect the biosphere and all biological life in many ways. Values between 2 and 4 indicate unsettled or even active magnetic conditions and are likely to be reflected in a degradation of HF conditions. Moving up the scale, five represents minor storm, six large storm, seven through nine represent major storm, and anything at nine or above represents the Stone Age. <laughs> yes, it's true. Although geomagnetic and ionospheric storms are interrelated, it's worth noting that they're different. A geomagnetic storm is a disturbance of the Earth's magnetic field, and an ionospheric storm is a disturbance of the ionosphere. And most of the energy comes in through our Birkelin current here at the ring, the ionosphere trough the auroral heating region where the electricity pours into Earth around 20 degrees north latitude, 18 if you want to be specific. The same thing happens at the southern hemisphere. Now together we call this the magnetosphere or the magnetic field of Earth, which, by the way, is experiencing a magnetic excursion. This allows more effect to our ionosphere through the incoming solar wind and cosmic rays, which is why we monitor the KP index. Now, if you don't understand solar indices at all, there's a three-page paper, which I'm going to share with you here, Understanding Solar Indices. When someone tells you that the flux is up, to 200 and the K is at 3. Do you know what they're talking about? You will after you read this article. And I'll leave it below. And many people have been questioning, well, the KP index is great, 
but we can only get it real time. There's no way to predict what it will do in the future. So how can we properly prepare for the future K-index? Well, you simply need to get the K7RA solar update. It comes out every month. Here is the December update, which came out three days ago. And it describes the solar flux predicted for the next 45 days, the predicted planetary A index, and so on and so forth. If you know that the KP is affected by space weather, then you can quickly run down here to the bold region and you will know that the geomagnetic field will be quiet, which means KP0 on December 12th, December 15th through the 17th, the 23rd, and the 28th through the 31st. This is the forecast. It'll be quiet to unsettled. It could also be KP0 the 9th through the 11th, which it has been the 13th, the 24th through the 27th. And then if you're worried about having a stroke during an active KP, we're looking at the 19th and the 20th. So there is a monthly prediction coming out from AARL every month. <clears throat> so if you're worried about myocardial infarction or human health effects, there are certainly predictors on the mainstream and you can subscribe to these channels and get up updates monthly. You can also just search after the first week of every month ARRL update and I, I just searched ARRL December update and I got it. So that's how you can predict future KP events if you're worried about human health because magnetic storms affect humans as well as telecommunications. So not only do we have to worry about the grid going down in the next few years as cycle 25 kicks in and the magnetosphere wanes, and we'll use the KP index to determine if we have to hunker down or go to the store and spend all our money because we just had a, we're at KP nine and no one knows what that means, but you do because you're buying all the sugar and all the bullets at Walmart. The effects of geomagnetic activity variations on the physiological and psychological state of functionally healthy humans is proven. It makes some people go crazy. We just came off of days of KP0 and we've had massive shootings. And these are the results of the Azerbaijani studies. So check them out. The links will be below. Solar and geomagnetic activity, extremely low frequency magnetic and electric fields and human health at the Earth's surface. This is what we're talking about. A substantial effect of geomagnetic storms on human health with a confidential probability of P equals 0.95. That means it's proven. The quantitative estimates of the biotropic effects are presented in this paper. Biotropic effects of geomagnetic storms and their seasonal variations. And it's glaring. For example, the frequency of occurrence of bursts exceeding the average number of hospitalized patients with mental and cardiovascular disease during magnetic storm increases approximately two times compared with quiet periods. And then during quiet periods, the CIA has determined that we become psychic and many people experience near-death experiences. Geomagnetic disturbances and cardiovascular mortality risk. This is one of the biggest connections. Short-term geomagnetic disturbances driven by solar activity have been linked to a broad range of adverse health effects. And here's an article if you want to read about it. Ben Davidson provided us with this graphic almost two and a half years ago. We're getting old in this game, but we're providing the most up-to-date, cutting-edge scientific information so that you can prepare for the future. Geomagnetic storm risks. Anything above five or six, you're worried about this column. Cosmic ray risks happen at zero only. 
and solar flare risks are going to be six and higher. We're going to have a day or two warning for the solar flare risks. We're going to have maybe a week or more for the geomagnetic storm risks because we can watch our sun. If we don't have the ability to see the sun turning, all bets are off. You need your own equipment at your own house to figure out what's going on. Cosmic ray risks are the biggest threat to human health for the next six months. Acute myocardial infarction, cerebral stroke, terminal arrhythmia, anxiety, stress, emotional instability, cognitive diminution, uptick in traffic accidents and work injuries, and people going buck wild and shooting up the office space. Suicide risk, mental disorder flare-ups, radiation risk for those flying at high latitudes. Be aware, be prepared. Don't be scared. Watch last year's video and comment below on how much better this video or worse it was. We're trying to make the channel better to expose it to more people that need to get this information into their hands. Don't be prepared. Be scared. Learn about the facts. Learn about your biosphere, your magnetosphere. Learn about the earth. Learn about your future. Because preparing for the future and knowing how to predict it are everything. We love each and every one of you. Share this video with loved ones that may benefit from this information. And be safe.